When I replaced the wood floor at my barn with a concrete slab, I saved as much of the wood as I could. The main support for the floor were some big timbers that ran the whole length of the barn, and I've had them stored out back for a couple of years now. I've really been wanting to do something with them before they rot and go to waste, and I thought making a workbench out of them would be a great way to return the wood to the barn, just in a different form. This would also be a great project to get some practice on the CNC table, which I thought I could use to mill the round logs flat. I'm going to say right up front that I know this isn't the easiest or the fastest way to go about this. I should probably just go find a sawmill. But the challenge of doing it all on the CNC table really interested me, and I decided I was going to use it for as much of the project as I could. I found that some of the logs had already rotted a little bit, but I hoped there was enough good wood on the inside still to get some use out of them. I wanted to start by making the tabletop, which I was roughly planning to make 4 foot by 8 foot. Leaving myself some extra length to work with, I cut the logs down to size. The gantry on my CNC table is 8 inches tall. So I needed to rip a couple inches off the logs so it'll clear it. I really wasn't sure the best way to do this, but thought the chainsaw might work. I wasn't making much progress with the electric one. So I grabbed the gas powered one and that was a little bit better. cut wasn't very pretty, but it should clear the gantry now. I designed the workbench big and beefy, making the most of the big logs I had. I wanted a 5 inch thick tabletop with 5 inch by 5 inch supports underneath it and 5 inch by 7 inch legs. I wanted all the pieces to be mortise and tenon, which I was really excited to do on the CNC table. Once I had the design finished, I broke apart all the pieces and laid them out in SketchUp. I've been learning some new software called VCarve for drawing vectors and outputting toolpaths to the CNC table. I was watching tutorials all summer long while driving tractor, and I couldn't wait to get some time this winter to start using it. I really like the software. It's easy to see how it's built from the ground up just for CNC users. The software is kind of divided into two sides. The left side is for setting up your material and drawing vectors and design work. Then once you're done with your design, you switch to the right side, which is all for specifying tools and outputting tool paths. It's been great for me because it kind of walks you through along all the steps so you can make sure you don't miss anything. There's a great preview feature to see how the cutting head is going to move and you can view the finished piece in 3D to see how it's going to look when it's done. To mill the logs, I made a pocket the same size as the log and set it up to take quarter inch cuts with the half inch in mill bit, which was the widest I had. Looking at the end of the log, I figured out where the best five inches in the middle of the log was and milled the top side down to that point. Then I could flip the log over and mill the bottom side down to the 5 inch mark. I really didn't want to use the chainsaw again to rip the log down. It just took too long and was a real pain. A couple of the other logs I had were just barely too tall to fit into the gantry and I was able to make them work just by hitting the high spots with the planer. 
when milling these down, I was thinking about the remaining bigger logs I had, and I realized that as long as the router milled ahead of the gantry from top to bottom, it would clear its way as it worked its way down. I made a custom toolpath and set the height to seven and three quarter inches just under the gantry. This worked for a while, but it ended up being too thick of a cut for it and it wasn't sounding very nice, so I had to bail on it. Then I realized that since there was about four inches between the router bit and the gantry, I could do a series of four inch pockets top to bottom that would let me do the same quarter inch depth passes that the router bit liked. This worked really well actually. Once I had it milled down to clear the gantry, I switched back to cutting lengthwise, which goes a lot faster and cuts better. The CNC table gave a nice chirp for me every time it found a nail. Luckily there were only a couple. And then for a week or two, there was just a lot of milling going on around here. Sun up, sun down. I started hearing the router bit noise in my sleep. It was really cranking out the sawdust. Every couple of logs I would stop and sweep, and I started piling up sawdust outside on the farm. I eventually got all the logs I needed for the tabletop milled down to five inches. For each log, I decided how wide it should be, trying to get everything out of them that I could, but still cutting off any rot on the outside. I got the first beam squared up and clamped down to the table, and then ran the toolpath I created in D-Carve to profile the predetermined width. The toolpath first plunge drilled for half inch holes on the ends, which the end mill bits didn't really like and usually smoked a bit. After that it profiled around the outside down to two and a half inches, which is as deep as the bit would go. I'm still figuring out the ideal feeds and speeds. It's getting a little bit of chatter here. Once it finished, I moved the log aside and ran the same four hole pattern into the machine bed. Then tapped in dowels and flipped the log over onto the dowels, which aligned it and let me run the same two and a half inch depth profile, cutting the rest of the way through the log. On the very last pass, there isn't much holding the piece in place, so I set a couple hundred pounds of weight on it to make sure it stayed put. I was always amazed at how well the two sides matched up. It was usually a faint line, but I was confident it would just stand out and it wouldn't be an issue. To strengthen the tabletop, I wanted to insert four threaded metal rods that I could tighten down and really hold the pieces together. To do this, I was going to need to cut holes through the sides of the beams. And I thought the best way to do this would be to set up a backstop that I could use to align the workpiece. I screwed down a 2x6 to the machine bed and 
profiled out a shape that would give me an X and Y edge. Another really cool feature that I've been using a lot in vCarve is automatic fillet creation. You just specify your tool radius and the software makes a dog bone corner that another sharp cornered piece will fit into. With the backstop done, I could use the auto zero to set the origin in the corner and started routing the holes. I also found another feature that directed the bit to spiral downward as a cut, which in the liked a lot more than the plunging it was doing before. I just don't think end mills are made to plunge cut like that. The holes lined up great after flipping the piece over and running the program again using the backstop to keep it aligned. I thought for the outer two pieces I would recess a slot that a big washer and nut would sit in so the metal bar wouldn't protrude from the sides of the table. Also, drilling square holes is a nice new novelty with the CNC router, so I made them square. On one side of the table, I left the outer edge, the rough, unfinished log, which I wasn't sure about at first. I wondered if I was going to regret it later, but now I'm really glad I did. I thought it was a way to show off where the wood came from. Two of the beams were too wide to stand up on the CNC table, so I just measured them carefully and used the mag drill on them. I picked up some one inch cold gold bar from town and cut them to length and the bandsaw. If I had did this again, I would have just used three quarter inch. One inch was definitely overkill. And I had no idea how hard it was going to be to thread. After doing eight ends, I was exhausted and vowed to never thread something that big again. But I got them done. I cut out some square washers on the plasma table and after a quick test fit decided I was ready for the big glue up. I tried to hurry and be quick but everything still took a lot longer than I thought it would. I made the holes for the round bar 1 16th oversized, but there was still a really snug fit driving the rods in. No clamps for this glue up were needed, it was kind of nice. The last thing to do was clean off as much of the wood glue as I could, which came oozing out from all sides 